Hello, everybody. Uh, now you can actually hear us, which means that the podcast is better. Um, this is the second episode of the second season of uh, State of Scrims, which is corresponding to the sixth season of Scrims Home. Uh, we just had two games casted earlier today, um, so we're going to go over our initial reactions to those and then predict the next four scheduled games uh, that we have here for you. Um, so, Mason, what are your initial takes based off of these earlier games? games beforehand, still managed to pick up a win in a lost series. Uh, Zach and Mike had really good synergy. Really well together. Um, and I think Spectre is also, came out of the gate swinging. I had them rated lower than Andromeda. They definitely proved me wrong on that front. Brewer and Cesarius and Synergy in that game was really crazy. Uh, also had a really solid uh, performance uh, on junglers like uh Maokai and also played a Diana game uh did play like the tank Diana which was a bit different than the version camp played do I have to okay hold on uh but basically uh yeah a really close game uh very solid so far so uh yeah really good series from both teams so Okay, um, hopefully the audio is a bit better. I realized what went wrong. Um, when I swapped the podcast scene, the mic uh, settings didn't carry over. Um, gotcha. So I think you were a bit quiet during part of that, but hopefully um, it'll be good. And this should be the only State of Screams episode we're actually doing from a laptop. Yeah, a little so, scuffed off. Yeah. Um, anyway, I feel like my initial takes were, I think it's insane that Will was allowed to get Twitch two games in a row. Um, it felt like in that second Nutbusters game, they really did have a grip on it and probably should have closed out that third game and won. Um, just got a little Maybe. too excited, uh, flipped it a little bit and ended up throwing. Um, second take is that uh, Ori looks like the worst champion in the game. <laughs> That's actually true. I forgot about that. <laughs> Like, we have two people playing Ori, and they, like, look like a completely different player than they've ever been before, like, in the worst way possible. Like, I think that champion yeah. is just super bad right now, or some, or just unlucky two games, but um, I think my other take is uh, Gruer is uh, insane. I did the go, I also yeah. think the fact that, like, zero ganks from Jonah into mid lane, I think that was pretty interesting. Um, and I think that yeah. made him look uh, the way he did, but I don't know if... It's not like he wouldn't do well if he did get ganked. We just yeah. don't know for sure, but... I just think Cesarius was covering him super well as well. Like, uh, they were, like, playing together super well. Like, uh, the Synergy team type beat, so... Yeah, okay. I mean, I think that was a little disingenuous. Uh, Jonah yeah. definitely did come in a couple of times. It's just, like, none of them were, like, successful, I guess. Yeah. Um, like, I know there was a lot of pressure mid uh, from the Kha'Zix, but obviously you're not going to get anything done if you're trying to gank someone in a wave. Um, so it's a bit rough, but... I don't know, it looked like he was going to pull off, like, a whole series with zero deaths, but I don't think that ultimately ended up happening. Um, nah, he dropped the death, so... It was almost, yeah. almost made it out, though, yeah. Yeah, I would say that, like, both series went like, how I expected them to, given the roster. Like, Metabusters, yeah. obviously, the roster is not at full strength. Like, we're missing you, uh, and we don't have, like, Joey in to fill the spot or anything. Um, yeah. So the performance that we saw from Metabusters on uh, Sunday is probably a bit worse than we're going to see from them for the rest of the season. Um, you could uh -huh. argue the same for uh, NYNB, although I feel like their top lane um, champions are more of, like, or top lane players, <laughs> we're back to this, um, are more like a trade-off. Um, I think Adam and yeah. Russ have differing strengths, whereas I feel like um, Mason brought Cam from the dust, and therefore it's just a better version of Cam. Uh, I'm going to catch the like this, that. but it's funny, so I'm saying it. Um, and then we I have... I think I've used that exact line with Cam, so <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you'll get that much flame for it, but... True. And then we have uh, Spectres and Andromeda, who, on the complete flip side, are running their main rosters that we're probably going to see the most of um, throughout the whole season. So we have a pretty good picture of how these teams are going to look. Um, I feel like that kind of makes sense in what you're seeing in that first series being kind of like a mess, like a lot of stuff was going on. 
Um, draft was rapidly changing as the series progressed, and I feel like neither team really had like a clear plan. Um, whereas I feel like in the second series that we saw where um, Andromeda and Spectres were playing, I feel like Spectres was executing like pre-planned ideas of how they were going to play the game. Like Cesarius's pathing yeah. was really seemed really intentional. It made a lot of plays around um, lanes at certain points of the game that just made a lot of sense. Um, I think yep. this is a play style that we're going to see um, from them consistently uh, throughout the season. And I think um, Andromeda, uh, the same thing. Uh, Andromeda is really reminding me of Rift Sharks from last season. Um, you have strong side bot that sometimes you're playing for, sometimes you're really not. Um, I will say, Joel the Goat uh, would never lose to Avery, so that... <laughs> <laughs> that is a difference. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I I did like the, the Victor priority in the one series and then the Soraka priority in the other. Um, mm -hmm. It really does show how, like, the mini metas in the between teams know each other. teams is really interesting. Yeah. Uh, I did also want to talk. I do want to gas up Russ quite a bit. Uh, he performed really well, like, I think, in his series. Uh, the series uh, versus Metabusters. I think he was playing out of his mind in all three games, and I think he was, was like a large reason why they were able to get super far ahead. Uh, I think he was playing so well on the tanks, and it's just wasn't able to convert all the way, but his gameplay was phenomenal. He was solo killing them, um, uh, dueling cam. Like, he was putting in the nine yards on these tank champions that aren't typically the carries, but I think he was putting in work on all of them, so... That's the rest, bro. You had a great series, phenomenal run. Type beat. Yeah, no, I was genuinely thinking the same thing, and then the I saw the Ori in the, in the, <laughs> in the second series also not do well, and then that kind of like overwrote the memory I had saved for it. No, Russ did super no, that's well. Fair. Um, lots of improvement uh, season to season, I feel like. Um, oh, yeah. Definitely sure. exploited Noam a bit, so uh, that's always funny. Uh, Mason is still probably not a full believer after that series, but uh, we'll, we'll see what uh, well, happens eventually. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, are there any, like, I'll draft find... things that stood out to you, Mason? I know that's an area that we both enjoy. I wasn't sure if you had any interesting takes um, on it. Not really. I think in the... In, or in the Nutbusters versus... Uh, the so Battle Busters versus Not Busters series, I think I think uh after game one we adapted to draft a little bit better. Uh we were drafting more toward like the strengths that our team has with Gamma on like more carry junglers versus like we put him on Sejuani game one for funsies just to see what would happen. Uh didn't really cover it for us there. Uh in game two, I think Spectres is uh very locked in on how they want to play the game. Uh, Cesarius knows what he wants to play, like these tankier junglers. Uh, I know we made the meme about Avery being uh, the weak side detainee. That's uh, that's that's Cesarius's job now. He gets to play boring tank junglers, uh, like the Maokai. He was playing like Tank Diana in the games. Like he is now the the weak side detainee in my opinion. So uh, really good on them to like uh, sack resources uh, in the jungle to get like these consistency junglers that uh, just really. Uh, put his team over the edge. They did like the Diana Yasuo thing from like years past. Um, and uh, just getting a good matchup in the Maokai versus Kha'Zix was super good as well. So good stuff from them. Uh, very solid drafts, IMO. From, yeah, I mean, uh, I know I dropped a message in uh, the first series that you're picking Diana Yone and not Diana Yasuo. So I'm glad I did. Oh, that too, second. that too. Dude, I was. <laughs> I don't know. You have Diana and you have one of the wind shitters. Like you might as well pick the right one. I hate to break it. It's too. a base one. That's kind of true. Kinda uh, I think Diana Yone and Diana Yasuo are pretty much interchangeable. It's just, uh, just depends on which one you really want to go for. I am like they kind of do the same thing. It's just you yeah, throw just ulties one's, on one's each other. One's more funny. <laughs> one's more base. Yeah, true. My know. bad, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I also feel like a lot of people got, like, their one tricks, which I wasn't really expecting. Like, uh, Dave yeah. Depp had Arena, Will got Twitch twice. Um, we see uh, Mythic got Nautilus both games, which I think is a little crazy, personally. Um, yeah. Stanley did get I a think... Victor game in. And then, yeah. obviously, Alana gets both of her champs, but I think that situation's a bit different because it's two champions, right? So it's not, um, like, a situation quite um, like uh... some of the other ones. I will say, I think 
the only one tricks that really felt like performed in my opinion was the Katarina and I think that was more so a draft thing. That's like my personal opinion on that. Like we kind of drafted a little awkwardly into her uh, with like no damage mid jungle. So we couldn't really punish her as much uh, after like 30 minutes or something because we had a Pantheon instead of... Right. I mean, but the, the games really last 30 minutes these days anyway. Like usually not. Yeah. But I don't, I don't really blame you for that one. I mean, I felt like the Twitch And also well. uh, um, the Ezreal. The Ezreal for Garrett was really That's true, but I feel like Garrett has a big enough champion pool you cannot call him one trick. Like, that's a signature pick, sure, but it's not like... I don't know. Yeah, that's it's true. It's not quite the same I, as these other picks. I don't know. I We debated a lot on whether or not the Twitch was actually useful in both games. I don't think the Twitch really did much in uh, the games that he got it, but uh, to each their own, I guess. Um I guess we just had different reads on it. I think because versus Nutbusters, we had to, like, I think there were higher priority bans, and we just had to let the Twitch through in order to get rid of, like, certain champions. Like, I think Mike has proven himself on these, like, assassin junglers, and, like, getting rid of Kha'Zix and Rengar is, like, way more valuable than uh, Will's Twitch, in my opinion. So that was just the read I had. I wasn't super sure on that. So I think we just executed a little bit on it, so. Yeah, oh, I mean, also my teams uh, maintained the uh, two one uh, streak, so that's really funny. But true, um, that is actually the wrong thing. I did not mean to pull that up. Um, what I do want to cover is uh, we have seen a lot of priority towards two specific champions. Um, let me see if I can get us to the right thing. Um, probably not. I probably cannot navigate this correctly on my laptop, but we're trying. Um, are Caitlyn and Kha'Zix fraud champions? Are they actually good? Because um, those are two champs that we've seen a lot of, and I feel like they didn't actually perform uh, when we end up uh. seeing them in game. So my question is, are they actually good? Or do we think it's just like bait because uh, it's decent and solo queue? Um, I am trying to pull up um, the stats for this season of these champions. Yeah, I will say, I think Kate is a little more of a fraud champion because it's, like, a little harder to execute. I think Kha'Zix just hasn't been utilized correctly. More so, like, I think Jonah in that game went for, like, a Q-Evolve setup instead of, like, a W-Evolve setup, which is a little bit better into, like, the comp that they had. I talked about it a little bit on the stream. And also, like, he picked the Kha'Zix after they showed Nautilus uh, Maokai, and that's, like, a super rough position uh, because, like... I think versus certain teams, if they play more like uh, two squishy bot laners, like double enchanter bot, uh, enchanter ADC bot lane, uh, champions like Kha'Zix can really flourish. But versus Spectres, exactly. Um, Mythic is just hard slamming Nautilus every game, so Kha'Zix just cannot play the game that well versus Nautilus and a tank jungler. That's like really hard and a pretty tall ask. So I think that was most of the reason why it was good versus or it was bad in that game, uh, we just didn't want to let it through and draft. It, like, I think the champion just has too many ways to mitigate weaknesses that it has in the Duskblade build and like other setups like that. Uh, and I think Caitlyn is just too hard for current pool of ADCs to execute. DM. That's my take, at least. It's just, uh, this champion, you need like a lot of uh, lane setups and like uh, jungle pri uh, priority bot side, and I don't think the eighty like the like junglers haven't really played for that in like the games that they picked Caitlyn. So I think that's more of the issue rather than uh, champions being weak per se. That's my opinion. Gotcha. I mean, I think my read on Kha'Zix is probably in line with yours. Um, I feel like there are definitely some angles where Kha'Zix can do better, and that was definitely a terrible game for it. Like, you're basically just clumped up the entire game no matter what, so it's going to be really hard for you to actively um, yeah. find, like, spots where there's isolation that you can actually capitalize on. Um, so that makes it hard. Uh, for Caitlyn, I'm kind of... I'm, I'm on the edge here, because... Uh, Caitlyn, before she got buffed, was pretty indisputably the worst ADC in the game. And the buff uh, is not crazy. <laughs> so, yeah. I think she is just not that good. Like, she probably went from bad to, like, pickable. Um, I just uh, don't yeah. think we should be first prioring this champion all the time. Um, especially yeah. not if we're picking it with Seraphine. I think that is, like, such a bait matchup. It doesn't actually do anything for you. Um, but Kate uh, Lux went slightly better. Uh, uh. But... 
I feel like that's just like a lane where it's more acceptable to do it. Um, and obviously people were saying Kate with Engage is probably better, which I do agree with. If you have some way to like force the issue on Caitlyn getting ahead, um, I think that's pretty solid. And I think the lane where you had Caitlyn paired with support that I actually like seeing her with, um, Kindred obviously does not offer a lot of setup um, when you're ganking early. Um, even though Mike did get fed, so he was far ahead and you'd be able to get kills and kind of get Caitlyn a lead uh, off of those ganks, it's still not like CC setup that actually allows you to get this, especially because Kindred slow did get nerfed, so now she has even less CC than she did before. Um, sure. Surely that's an impactful uh, change, but yeah, I don't know. My conclusion is that Caitlyn mostly fraud, fraud bug yeah. only a little fraud. Uh, I will also say, uh, I've seen some people cook in on, like, an Ivor and Caitlyn lane setup. That sounds kind of funny. Maybe we'll see that at some point. But No, I've been trying to push that for, like, I don't know, as long as I can remember. Because there are two <laughs> things Caitlyn needs. Roots and bushes. And Ivor has both. So you literally yeah, maybe we'll see it for anything better. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Bug less fraud. Uh, Caitlyn for sure, probably fraud champion. We'll have to see the as the season shakes out. It's okay. You'll probably not see Caitlyn from us because my Caitlyn is like infamously bad. Um, I don't yeah, think we need to check not. the stats, but I think it would be funny to do it for the culture anyway. Um, yeah, of course. Uh, if we just, I guess this is just team format. I'm trolling a little bit. I'm sure when I tab out on this, you like can't even see us on the stream anymore, but. It's okay. It's I fine. am the O three 3 on the Caitlyn, so we're probably not going to see it. Alex, Huge. Alex 9 and 4. Garrett is 1 and 6. So, Oops. Um, Will is also <laughs> 0 and 4. Um, so, yeah, it looks like ADCs that are currently playing this season, like Hong is allowed to, Sarverse is probably allowed to also, and Alex is allowed to. And the rest of us should be, like, questioned at gunpoint if we ever lock this champion in because oh my yeah. god <laughs> these <laughs> rewards are so bad um, Greer Greer is saying I another team do not have it in us to perform on this champion I don't think yeah Greer is saying another team won't ban Kate against Andromeda and it will win uh, I could honestly see that they, I think they were the best Caitlyn bot lane uh, when it was good last season and maybe they bring it out again versus an, another team so yeah, I mean, we'll I will, to see. I'll caveat my stats with the fact that I'm 0-3 on Caitlyn, but two of those are Weezer games, so they technically don't even count. <laughs> like, let's be real. Sure. I, I could have picked anything and still lost, I think. Um. <laughs> Can't let PB have priority that easily. Uh, yeah, that makes sense, honestly. I could see that uh, perspective, TBH. Yeah, I mean, I think it's probably a valid ban against Alex. I just, I didn't like how it was, like, full priority in that first series. Like, I don't know. I just don't think it was yeah. accomplishing what we thought it was. Okay, maybe, okay. maybe picking it in game one to tactically bait Will into picking it into game two. And then, like, maybe that was the then, I don't know. Like, I think if Will just slams Twitch three games in a row, like, I think he has a much better chance of helping his team win that series. But I don't know. Especially because I felt like, I don't know, even though game two was really quick, it didn't feel like it was, like, stompy. Yeah, like, I, I can see that. It could have swung either I way think at the beginning of the game, I felt like. Diana and Yone just clicked R like multiple fights in a row and just yeah. did, they did they have a big lead before they started pressing R though so <laughs> I don't know yeah that too I don't know I'll have to see yeah. um here let me wait so we're casting tomorrow's game right yeah oh okay. that is not the right thing uh, I'm just gonna close the stream manager so I don't leak anything I don't think there's anything important on there but uh, we will see um, we are capturing this correctly, right? Okay, cool. Um, I what so. I do want to look at is just champions in general that have shown up in the team format so far. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, we do not yet have uh, present stats loading. Um, this is not incognito, so it says there's no stats. I will get this fixed eventually, guys. I don't know why uh, my server settings are set up the way they are, because I don't think I can change them. But... Uh, obviously, Kaisa and Zaya are pretty high prio. Um, I think we all could have predicted that one um, coming in here. Soraka, I think, is probably just going to be um, that series specific and not necessarily something we see all the time. Um, obviously, Michaela and uh, Kathy are both pretty good on the pick. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just pull up um, their specific stats. 
um, for this champion. Um, they are the two players who have played this champion the most. Uh, Michaela does have that 60% win rate on it, and Kathy just has 23 games. Um, so it's no surprise to see that champ tossed around between those two players. Um, yep. I almost have the same KD on that, too. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, Caitlyn's high, but that's whatever. Um, Ezreal is just Garrett. Um, Diana, that we've seen in multiple series, so that's something I do want to keep an eye out for. Then Malkai, Nautilus, uh, these are champions that are just good in the meta right now, so they're not a surprise. Same with Sejuani. Um, Victor, I think, is a product of the series we're in. Um, Stanley's yeah. in the series, so it's obviously going to be high prio. Um, and then this yep. Ori, uh, I would actually like to not see that as much, but, you know, we'll see. We'll have to see how it goes, Maybe honestly. someone else can play um, Ori better. <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's much else overlap. Um, I do want to talk about this Diana pick a little bit. I think we will probably see this uh, crop up a little more. Uh, yeah, it just so. has a lot of synergies versus, like, uh, uh, or, like, with a lot of different champions. Um, there's a lot of build flexibility in, like, being able to build tank. You can build AP if you're not a cringe Nene baby building tank Diana. Um, you have, like, potential draft options with, like, Yasuo, and he's just, like, it's just a really good wombo jungler, and it just sets up really well. She did get buffed recently with, like, uh, bonus damage on her E and her W, I think, have, like, extra AP ratios. So I think this champion might crop up a little more than we expect. I know Anne used to play it a lot, so I think we'll probably see some prio on it in tomorrow's series as well, but we'll have to really see on that one. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm not going to is seriously DMing so. Anne right now. Like, Mason's on to us, surely. Anyways, this is a joke, but we'll, we'll have to see how it cracks up. Uh, but I think we'll probably see a lot more Diana Priya. Um, yeah, I think we I think can probably really... uh, go ahead into predictions for the next four series okay. that we have scheduled. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, I think we just don't have enough data on the champions to really have too much to talk about. Um, yeah, for sure. We will get presence implemented at some point earlier in the season. I think it's a cool stat to look at, just being able to see pick yeah. ban and stuff. Uh, and I think Kazakh's presence will probably stick around as well, but yeah, I mean, um, unless they got him, but I, I doubt. Yeah, it. Riot seems to. And the him. Udyr hacker him, of course, but I think that's like a my team specific thing. So true. Um, once this loads, okay, yeah. So the last game we have this week is going to be Rift Sharks versus uh, Mass Valor and Pirates, um, uh -huh. which I think we talked about at the end, or y'all talked about at the end of that stream. Yeah, um, that we just yeah. saw. Uh, I am going to predict a 2-1 for us. I'm not as confident in our team as Cesarius is. But uh, just because yep. I agree with Noam, I think there's a bit of an X-factor on the team. It's really hard to predict how good MVP is. Um, yeah. I, have a lot I of think faith. he's rating Puza a lot higher now, so I yeah, think well, I can see it happening. <laughs> Puza went even into Noam, and Noam thinks he's, like, the hottest shit, so... <laughs> I mean, take take it with a grain of salt, personally. But I mean, I just think there's a lot to that team. Uh, it's really hard to get a read. No, just cannot do. stop catching strays. I guess that's really tragic. Unfortunate. Well, he's got to play better. You know, gap us sure. next time, and then then we can talk. True. Um. Anyway, I think that game is going to be pretty close, pretty interesting. Good watch if you guys are free to watch it. But I have a lot of faith in the roster we're running. But. Yep, I agree. Um, um, we'll have to see. I. I think I submitted to one in the earlier prediction as well. I think I I like on paper. I think you guys have an okay matchup into their team, but I'm just curious how far uh uh are like just how much MVP has like worked on their synergies and whatnot. Because I think we've seen in like the games so far that synergy does kind of matter with like how Spectres is playing. I think. Just being able to be on the same page, I think. Uh, you saw, like, lack of synergy kind of fuck over NYNB, so I think we'll have to see if it works out for them. So, yeah, that's I mean, just I would say in, like, the last three months they've played two games together, so uh, yeah. take, take that as you will. But obviously, yeah. like, we have a lot of subs, so we probably aren't playing full five stacks together anyway, so uh, yeah. we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, for next week's games, um, we can just do them one by one. Uh, I will say 2-0 into New York Nutbusters. Uh, I think bot lane and okay. mid lane looked the strongest for those two. Um, uh -huh. 
or <laughs> those two. It's, there's so many syllables. I thought it was two teams. Um, I think those two lanes are the strongest aspect of New York Nut Posters, and I think um, they're also the strongest side for the Rift Sharks. So I think we're actually going to match up pretty well into them. And I just mm-hmm. think, um, like, one-to-one, I think we are stronger in both those two roles. Um, I think our matchup uh, top lane depends heavily on who the two top laners in the game are. But I think yeah. even at our worst um, spread there, I don't think we're put too far back. And I think our junglers should be able to mitigate Mike. Um, again, depending on who we have, but I don't think we're going to be in too bad of a position there. So I'm going to say the 2-0 for that. I'm a little bit more scared of MVP, just because we haven't seen anything from them yet, um, whereas uh, New York Northbusters, we did get to watch a series from them already. Yeah. Uh, for me, I okay, I think I'm going to say 2-1. Uh, okay, I guess I'm just a coward, because I'm probably saying 2-1, but I think I'm going to say 2-1... I think I'm gonna say two one nutbusters. Unironically, I think uh, Mike and Zach just really impressed me yesterday. I think uh, I think Russ is kind of being chronically slept on. Uh, I'm just gassing Russ up super hard. I think if you have the option in like draft to do like the sword and shield setup with Adam, I think uh, that team gets really hard to figure out uh, in draft. So I think if that's the roster that they can make work. I think this team is like super, super hard to figure out. So I think I'm gonna put Nutbusters two one. It's like a super hard series to guess. Though I think this is probably this and Meta Busters versus Factors are like two really close series for next week. So, um, but I, th- I just I, I liked a lot of what I saw from uh, Nutbusters in our series versus them, and I think. Yeah, we'll just have to see how it shakes out. Uh, Zach, Zach has shown in the past that he's can play like more setup mid laners, and I think that might work out for them if they figure out their synergies fast enough. So, because Mike is definitely more of like a carry jungler kind of guy, so I think if you can set him up for success, then they have a lot of avenues to win. So, yeah, I mean, I'm with you. I think the hardest part of that series for us is going to be um, figuring out drafts. Uh, there are a lot of yeah. uh, people who you're going to need to give certain champions um, or have just like a pre-planned plan to counter them. So it's going to be pretty rough, but I think there's a lot of strategy to who you like at their power picks, and then you're going to have to focus resources to stopping that player. Um, Which I do think is going to be interesting. I see you're uh, (laughs) getting a delightful conversation with someone, I'm sure. (laughs) (laughs) Presumably a member of the the Nutbusters themselves, but... Uh Anyway, I think Andromeda versus MVP is going to be a really interesting game. Um, oh, that's all I these think, games are actually really close. I think whoever wins um, the Rift Sharks MVP series, uh, like if we win, I think Andromeda wins. If we lose, I think uh, Andromeda's going to lose. I think our teams are pretty well paired up. Um, uh-huh. I think my read is that Rift Sharks do slightly edge out Andromeda, um, but I don't think the difference between us is to the point where. Um, we'd be able to beat MVP, and they would not end up with that same result. Yeah, I, I can see that. Uh, do you uh, do you want to submit your prediction first, or should I go first since you did one first last time? I should probably go first. Oh, I, mean, uh, I said I, I said two one for us versus MVP, so I'm saying two one for Andromeda for MVP as well. I'll just match. Okay, the I, th- I think I'm gonna match you as well, though. I think Andromeda, even though they did lose their games, I think they. Ch- showed a willingness to like learn and adapt uh, i think they've also put in like the most games as a team compared to like other teams so i think they're on a good track to improvement so i think they've played super well uh, or they played well in their games for suspectors they just need to clean up a little bit of the communication and stuff like that um I think MVP is just too unknown to me. Like, Liz also has gotten consumed by the Baldur's Gate uh, community, so I don't think they've played as much League as, like, the rest of us. They, I think MVP just also has not put in a bunch of games uh, as a team, so I think that might work against them. So we'll have to see where they end up, but... Yeah, I mean, I think the other thing for Andromeda is Stanley obviously had a bit of a weaker performance today, but I think that is yeah. due to the fact that Jake and I drained his brain and, like, leached his life like we actually starved him from two days straight like (laughs) i think his mental and physicality will recover um but i think that 
matchup mid is going to be critical. Um, if yeah. he's going to be able to neutralize heroic or just not um, lose into him super hard, I think Andromeda stands a chance. But um, if heroic is able to get a leg up on Stanley, then I think um, that series goes from interesting and close to uh, a bit of a disaster. So I yeah. think that's something that we're going to need to keep our eyes on. Uh, for Spectres versus Metabusters, I think these are the two best teams in the league right now, provided you're actually in for that game. Uh, so if you're not, I yeah. think y'all, your team still has rosters that uh, should be able to rival Spectres. Um, but I think that series is going to be really good. Um, seeing how Spectres were off the gate, I'm, I want to say that they'll win 2-1. Uh, I think it'll be close. Okay. I think you guys should be able to take a game off of them. But uh, yeah. Spectres just looks... Uh, I expect them to be good. Uh, they look better than I thought they were going to be, um, yeah. at least to start off. Um, and I think they will be able to find weaknesses in your guys' team and exploit them. I'm expecting the bot lanes to go pretty even, just based on what we saw. Because we saw three games of Garrett, Kathy, and we saw two games of uh, Sarvis Mythic. Um, mm-hmm. They seemed about equal. Um, yeah. from what I could tell but I think top lane there's a huge disparity um, yeah. and so I think it Avery really is, is going to come down to the top side of the map and Spectres uh. just looked way more coordinated uh, than the Metabusters did but obviously it's hard to get a read um, since the roster we saw from Metabusters is not what we're going to be seeing um, throughout yeah. the whole season but again I don't actually know who's playing in the game uh, so it's hard to make a true read but I will say two on Spectres okay. well I guess I'll go opposite side then because I I think we can beat uh, Spectres uh, if I'm playing. I think even if I'm not, like, Gam was performing pretty well. Uh, Him and Thomas, I think, had pretty good synergy for people who haven't played together a lot. So I think if we could improve on that, there's, like, a lot of ways for us to win out um, versus them. I am very curious to play versus Cesarius in the jungle. Um, I think he has, like, a really interesting pool that I want to play versus... uh, Super excited for that series, but I will say 2-1 for Metabusters, because I believe in my team, so. That's a bit of a, I guess, the, the Kofi M take? I don't know. I'm just, I think I will perform, so that's really it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm pretty excited to lane against Will uh, next week. I think it's going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, will Will's my boy, so I think that's going to be a really entertaining series. Yeah. Agreed. I'm pretty excited for next week. Should be a fun that of games uh yeah yeah i do think it's gonna be fun to see the two teams that have won already play each other um that is always fun uh to get to see happen so early on sometimes you just see like top teams play the bottom teams over and over again and there's not really any crossover uh yeah which can get uh, a also before we continue uh, i do need to change my answer cam is currently downloading Baldur's gate so i'm changing my answer to two one specters so <laughs> Okay, that's very uh, understandable. <laughs> uh, we'll have to see how that shakes out, but uh, well, I'm losing another team member to Baldur's Gate. I'm also uh, going straight down the Baldur's Gate path, so uh, we're just we're fucking around this season and finding out. So, uh, five Baldur's Gate, it's a great game, really fun. Uh, plug for Baldur's Gate here. So, All right. I'm not sure anyone on my team plays it, so maybe this is like this is our route, like Spectres or Sharks one and two. <laughs> Because we had to we uh, escape the Baldur's Gate curse. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> All right. I do uh, think we can probably cut this episode a little bit short, just because audio is yeah. a bit scuffed, and I'm kind of yeah, yeah. stuff to just, talk I, about since we haven't gotten to yeah, the yeah. end of the season. But yeah, um, I think it was a good episode, regardless. Uh, we got, I think we covered everything we really needed to. Um, yeah, I'm excited for this season. Uh, a lot of stuff uh, should be really interesting to see. So, next next week True. should be pretty fun. So. Yes, check out series tomorrow at six, and yep. uh, thank uh, you it'll watching. be me and Dean casting. So. True. Yes, that'll be a yeah, banger cast. All right. Peace. Peace.